And what a thrill it is to <laughs> welcome in the head coach of the yeah. Silver and Black, Antonio <laughs> Pierce. My boy. Good to see you, Coach. How are you? What's up, Always coach? a pleasure. A lot's changed for you from Media Day last year. What a journey it's been a year ago from today. Tell us about it. Yeah, I don't even think I came outside for Media Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry there. But, uh, no, it is. It's been a uh, great opportunity, fun, exciting. Uh, looking forward. Looking forward. Looking forward to training camp. Looking forward to getting all the guys in the pads, bonding, building what we've been doing over the last several months in this offseason program and just let it all fly, let it all lay out when we get on that grass. Coach, has it become easier to have your style kind of um, overtake this organization? Because I know it's unique and not everybody was on board with it, but uh, I think us in the building understood you know, what you were trying to accomplish, physicalness, toughness, belief in yourself, preparation, all those little details that you saw. And I go back to, you know, the interception that J.J. got yep. and him talking about how you were able to kind of give him that freedom to be able to believe. And Has it become easier to kind of coach that way? It has because, you know, when, you're, when your top players, when your best players believe, it's easy for everybody else to fall in line, right? right? So I think for me, you know, you deliver the message, you don't harp on it, you empower your coaches, your coordinators, and then your players to own it. And, uh, you know, I think the cool thing about this whole situation is, okay, AP got, you know, I had the vision, I had the plan. But there's no plan and no vision without people. Mm -hmm. We have the right people in place, both with our staff, our players, the guys that we drafted, the guys we brought into free agency. They understand what the right away is. That was our number one conversation. Uh -huh. Do you get the culture that we're setting and that we're building? And the best part about it, it's not a piece in the culture. It's the players. It's the building. It's everybody doing it. It's collective, and that's what you're seeing. Coach, how important was it for the players and coaches that you brought in, especially the coaches, to have that energy that matched the same energy? I'm seeing all these former players out there that are coaches like a Cadillac Williams, like a Gerald Alexander, these guys, uh, and they just have that energy, and it's being displayed even in OTAs. Yeah, I mean, different game from when me and EA, uh, EA played. I mean, coaches are a little bit older. Yeah. They told you what to do. They demanded it. You yeah. did it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You ran. But now it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Right, and you want guys, and and our players really, they really relish on guys that they can relate to, that been there and done it. But more importantly, that have the love for the game, mm -hmm. and more importantly than all that, they want to be here. EA hit on it. This is different. Yeah, AP's is different. I'm a different coach. I get it. It takes a different individual to, for us all to work together. But it's okay for you to be different. Right. You could be you, cause I'm gonna be me. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna do it collectively. The same way with the message, like I always keep going back to the vision, the philosophy, and the culture that we want to build here. Coach, what about you personally, your schedule with all your commitments now in the community, alumni, players want to talk to you, your family, travel, Coach DeMesa coming up. How do you handle, take us through a day, getting up in the morning, <laughs> your fitness, your mind, and how you, when do you put your head down at night? Can I start today? How yeah, about today? You know? today. I haven't drove my Impala, the red Impala okay. I drove on game. I haven't drove it since we played the Denver Broncos. Okay, wow. You know, got to ask, hey, can you bring your car up today? So I'm not thinking. I haven't started that bad boy up in <laughs> six months. <laughs> I go downstairs at 445. No, the better. I know, I got it. I'm over there asking jumper cable. They were looking at me crazy. I get AAA out there. Six o'clock, we get it done. Car's up here clean. We're ready to roll. But, I mean, it's just things like that. But you know, I think more important, when you're in this position, especially in offseason, you know you got to touch so many different people. And I said it in my first press conference, it starts with the fans, it starts with our alumni, and it starts with our organization. And whatever I could do each and every day to help somebody be there, speak, say hello, uh, you know, go through the requests that they have, I mean, that's a part of the beast. But more importantly, I hired some really good coordinators. Yeah. Patrick Graham, Luke Getzey, Tom McMahon. And I trust those guys to get the job done. So if AP's out the office for an hour, or if AP has to go away, I don't have to, they don't have to worry about me looking over their shoulders. They don't have to worry about if they're doing the right thing, because mm -hmm. I trust them. But when you're in this seat, though, it's hard. It, it, <laughs> yeah. It's not even 24 hours. It's 25. <laughs> you, know, you always hear that. Like, nah, it's legit. It's real. But you do got to make time to take care of yourself. AJ, Ricky, uh, and our organization do a great job with nutrition, getting a lift in, you know, just taking care of your body. You got to be smart. And more important, like I tell our coaches, we got to get our rest. The dog days of, you know, being at work for 16 hours and not being rested and prepared and wide-eyed and ready to go, those days are over. You know, you got to come out here and really – Give these guys everything you got. 
And I think that's the most important thing that, look, we can, we can be about film and ball all day, but you got to take care of yourself and your family. Come here with the right mindset and get ready to work. Man, that, that's, where did you get that? I mean, where did that game plan come from? Yeah, that's a good question. The good and bad part, of, a good and bad part about my career is, I played for a lot of coaches. <laughs> you know, in Washington, had three head coaches, four D coordinators. Then I had Tom Coffin, two D coordinators there. So I was able to just pick a lot of things that I liked. And then obviously, EA knows this. We worked at ESPN, and there was a lot of things that I learned there, from organization, how to treat people, how to manage people, how you schedule things. Um, how do you match up talent together, right? It was, it was critical. I mean, you yeah. on radio, we had to have a certain rapport right. to kind of play off of one another, and, and that was key. So where did I get all that from? It's a little, obviously, it's AP is my background, but it's also all those gentlemen that coached me, and one that's here with us now, Marvin Lewis, yeah. you know, somebody that's helped yeah. guide me throughout my career. You talked about trusting and, and, and trusting your coaches, and Marvin Lewis, Joe Philbin, guys that have been there, done that. How important was it to have those guys on your staff to be able to, to lean on if you needed to? You know, I always say, you know, players need to be coached up and coaches need to be coached up, mm -hmm. right? Swallow your pride, check your ego at the door. I got two gentlemen that have been in the National Football League over 75, 80 years. I'll be a fool not to bring yeah, them in the building. Right, right, right. Not just for me, but for our coordinators. Mm -hmm. You know who's benefiting more than AP from Marvin Lewis? Patrick Graham. Who had one of the best defenses of all time? Yeah. The Baltimore Ravens yeah. with Marvin Lewis running the show. Yeah. How about we pick his brain? You know, then you got Phil, Joe Philbin, who was in that system that Luke Getsky's bringing here way back with the Packers, been a head coach, been through his ups and downs throughout his career, just came from college. So he took a step back, came here. So now he has fresh ideas. And I, th I think the best thing about our staff is that we get together, we go in that room, it's a round table, we throw things against the wall, some things stick, some things don't, but everybody goes in there with an open mind, check your ego again at the door, your way ain't the only way, yeah. and we'll find the right way. Okay. Coach, the media, you just mentioned mm -hmm. it. I think a lot of the media, especially nationally, who aren't looking at the Raiders the way they should, are going to try to turn this into a quarterback question. Who's going to be the quarterback? I look at Christian Wilkins as a complete game changer here. He could turn the ball over at midfield. You're in field goal range quickly with Carlson. You can take a shot with Devontae or Trey. You can run the ball and take some clock there. The defense, with that signing to play along Koontz and Max, how different is that now as you look at the scheme and how you're going to win close games? Really different. Yeah. And you don't know that until you watch practice. And you with Christian each and every day. The other day we went over here to the Aces, played a little basketball, a little team bonding. You know who the best player was? Christian Wilkins. <laughs> Not even close. We're all sitting there like, what in the world is this? Right, right. Three in the pound man dunking yeah. and doing all this stuff that he's able to do. But more importantly, the love, the leadership, the passion, the desire to win. We got to bring in winners. Yeah. We got to bring in guys that want to win, that's going to strain. There's two gentlemen that's in this building every day before coaches. Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins. They happen to be on the same D-line playing next to each other. <laughs> God bless everybody else. Don't worry about our quarterback, buddy. Worry about yours. <laughs> worry about yours. How much better does that make everyone on that defense, having that big fella in the middle, though? Man, just having Christian, again, along with Max, and how they work, the effort, the pursuit, the consistent perfection of chasing to be the best at their position. You, you're, you're foolish if you're, not, if you're not on the train and you're running with these guys. Right. You guys will see here in a couple of days as we go through mini camp. Just watch them run. Just watch our guys. Watch the effort. Mm -hmm. Watch the passion. Watch the, the bond, the excitement that they play with. Yeah. That's been every day because yeah. <laughs> we walked back in this building. Their energy from station to station is incredible. <laughs> and I get it. The rah rah, the AP, the energy, all that stuff. Uh, no, no, no. It no. ain't AP no more. Yeah. Right. You got to deal with them dudes. AP don't play. I got the headset on, y'all. I'm watching. <laughs> you got to deal with them suckers. But more importantly, everybody on our team now has taken ownership mm -hmm. to be the best they can. Right. That's why we had 30, 35 guys here the entire offseason. And then when we got here, close to almost 100% participation throughout the offseason program. Talk to me. How, how's my guy Jack doing? That, oh, man. Yeah. Man, yeah I, I, Jack, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> how's Jack doing? Jack's doing good, man. Doing you know good. what? I think I think we've all settled around Jack. Jack is a unique individual, special talent. Yes. Take the talent away. The person. Jack is like any of us that is somebody that wants to be loved, appreciated, coached hard, but he does demand respect. Yeah. And they got to go both ways now. So I think our leaders have done a great job of constantly rallying around him and putting their arm around him. Our coaches, Ricky Manning, the constant communication, the daily updates to just, hey, man, you good? How's everything going? Uh -huh. Figure out Jack as a person before you worry about Jack the corner. Right.
and then you can coach Jack much better. I've dealt with him since he was 13 years old. Yeah, I get it. I know. It. I know. That. I get it. And he's a special talent. When Jack is 100, the Raiders are in a good place. Yeah. And we just got to keep that going. And it's it is a process. Listen, he's this is third year in National Football League. We're talking about like this guy's a a 10 year vet. Yeah. 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 He's just now coming his own. He hasn't played a full season. We're hoping to get Jack a full season. He had a great offseason. He's worked his tail off. we got to keep growing from where we were last year. You draft corners in the fourth and seventh round. Jacorian Bennett's coming back. Worked with him last year as you were a coach, now the head coach. It's important that that other corner. And Nate Hobbs, I've said this about Nate Hobbs. I mean, I thought he could play on the outside just as good as in the slot here. But that second corner and that competition, Coach, what do you look to see here when we come up to training camp? Well, I, I think the key word you hit on was competition. And that's something that we really harped on. And you hit on it earlier. When you have a quarterback competition, it's competition everywhere because all eyes is on everybody. And that corner room is very talented. It's young. It's got some guys in experience. But what they got is a one-two. They lean on one another. They're asking questions. They're here working out before practice, after practice. But more important, this is their now second, third year in the system for some of these guys, right? When you're a rookie and you get thrown in the fire week one, that's not an easy task. No, not yeah. at all. Not many of us can do that. I didn't do it week one. It was like week two or three. EA, what about you? What, was, what week was it as a rookie? Did you start? Week one. Okay, EA special. <laughs> <laughs> like, and he's looking at me like, look at him flex, <laughs> flex on you like that. <laughs> but it was difficult, right? Because yeah. you go through your ups and downs. And I yeah. think with Bennett, and what I like to see with our rookies, like we don't need to throw them out there in the fire. If they're not ready, don't put them out there because yeah. you get baptized the wrong way, right? Yeah. Yeah. But a great offseason by Bennett. Being in here with JB each and every day, what I love about JB, he asks questions. He's a student of the game. He's always, he's always, give me more, AP, give me more. He's asking different coaches. You got a guy in your room that's coaching you, Ricky Manning, yeah. who played at a high level. Yep. Yeah. Right? So that's a great asset that we have with our coaching staff, having guys that played it that can calm the nerves of a young player who, I, I need to go. Slow down, young bull. You'll get there one day. Yeah. Coach, we got you and to Max Crosby. That's an A block. So yeah. we thank we you. We can finish after this. Well, right. we a lot got of juice more. here. A lot of juice. Come on. Yeah, Thanks, we, Coach. We'll be we seeing you there. a lot. Thanks for your time as always. Thank you guys. All right, big there dog. There he is, Antonio Pierce. How great is that? <laughs>